Hi, my name is Abhishek and I am a legal intern at Lexis and Company. So today is my topic is Law of Criminal Custody in India. So first, what is custody? It generally means the state of being kept by the police or kept in jail, usually while waiting to go to a court for trial. So in the case of Chotelal v. State of Uttar Pradesh, it is observed that the word custody in section 27 of the Evidence Act not meant only physical custody if a person is under the surveillance of the police and cannot get away from a police officer it will also be considered custody in 1998 in the case of bibacha uh, baltharu versus state of urissa the observation of chote lal versus state of uttar pradesh is upheld and it is also added the restriction on person movement is also considered as custody and formal arrest and formal custody are different Supreme Court in the case of Uttar Pradesh vs. Demon Upadhyay took a view that when a person directly giving information to a police officer which may be used as evidence against him may be deemed to have submitted himself to the custody of the police officer within the meaning of section 27 of the Indian Evidence Act. So just let us talk about the laws governing the custody. So the section 57 where when read with the section 167 of the Criminal Procedure Code gives us a clear picture of the procedure of co uh, procedure of custody and also clears the types of custody and how many days can someone be held in the custody so next talk about the let's, uh, let's talk about the types of custody so there are two types of custody judicial custody and police custody judicial custody is such that in this person is sent to jail and uh, police don't have uh, physical custody and if they want to net, uh, interrogate the accused they have to take the permission of the magistrate in police custody in this police have the actual physical custody of the accused so what is the procedure of custody so a person arrested by the police with or without the warrant need to proceed uh, need to produce before the judicial magistrate within 24 hours a time of travel is not taken into account Police can't keep any person under their custody for more than 24 hours except if it is authorized by judicial magistrate. Police officer not below the rank of such sub-inspector will, uh, will produce the accused before the judicial magistrate and before granting the custody, the magistrate should make, the cer uh, make certain that the arrest made is legal, lawful and all the accused constitutional rights are satisfied. And the next one is the uh, officer must satisfy the magistrate that the arrest made was legal and constitutional. And if the arrest is not according to the law, then magistrate must not sanction the further custody and release the accused. Uh, the magistrate uh, should make a record in uh, writing about facts that convince him to authorize for further custody. And magistrate to whom the accused person forwarded for custody may or may not have the jurisdiction to try the case. If he doesn't, if he doesn't have the jurisdiction, he cannot send the accused in custody for more than 15 days. And if he thinks that further custody is not needed, he may transfer the accused to the magistrate having such jurisdiction. A magistrate has jurisdiction can extend the custody up to 90 days if an offence is punishable with that imprisonment of life or imprisonment for term uh, not less than 10 years and up to uh, 60 days in any other offences. So after the expiry of the 90 or 60 days period as the case may be accused must be released on bail only after he furnished the bail. If the judicial magistrate is not present then the accused can be present before the executive magistrate on whom the power of the judicial magistrate is conferred. So executive magistrate can, can not grant the custody for more than 7 days and during the 15 days of custody the accused can be transferred from judicial to police custody or vice versa but after the 15 days and uh, he has to be transferred to judicial custody for police custody presence of the accused is a must before the magistrate second class magistrate cannot authorize police custody unless they have given power by the high court in the case of women under 18 years of age the detention shall be authorized to be in custody of a remand home or a recognized social institution. So writ of habeas corpus is not attracted when the order of custody is passed by a competent court in a constitutional and wholly legal manner. So let us talk about the rights and remedies for the accused in custody. So first one is he has the right to know on which the ground he is being arrested 
and he has the right to get a lawyer of his own choice he has the right to get bail and he has the right to get medical treatment and arrest person can apply for the writ for the habeas corpus if he thinks that his arrest is illegal and procedure of custody is not followed according to law so the exception to the general law of custody is that section 43d uh, sub section 2 sub clause b of the unlawful activities prevention act 1967 is the exception to section 166 of 167 of cpc crpc so according to upa act the 1967 an accused can be present to custody for 180 days if certain condition are satisfied so the condition are namely uh, such that it has not been possible to complete the investigation within the period of 90 days a report to be submitted by the public prosecutor and the said report indicating the progress of the investigation and the specific reason for the detention of the accused beyond the period of 90 days satisfaction of the court in respect of the report of the public prosecutor so uh that's it thank you